Democrats love dictators and they love tyrannical government so long as they get to be the tyrant. Democrats are worried that if elected, or should I say re-elected, Donald Trump is going to act like a dictator. Okay, so, so get this. They're fearful that a second Trump presidency will undo generations of constitutional oversteps by past Democrat administrations and unconstitutional acts of Congress. Would that make Trump a small government fascist? Know this. The left in this country loves authoritarianism so long as they approve. You want an example? You want to know what a dictator sounds like? Here's an example. We need to do more. This is not about freedom or personal choice. It's about protecting yourself and those around you, the people you work with, the people you care about, the people you love. My job as president is to protect all Americans. So tonight, I'm announcing that the Department of Labor is developing an emergency rule to require all employers with 100 or more employees that together employ over 80 million workers to ensure their workforces are fully vaccinated. Where, where would he get that authority to make a law like that? And giving it cute little names like enacting a rule or developing a policy, if you're enforcing it like a law, it's a law. Is there any line of text in Article 2 of the Constitution that allows that? No. But they love the idea of the benevolent dictator. There should be no limits on the power of government to do good in their eyes. Well, the truth is, when the government has no limits on the power to do good, we find very quickly that it does bad. Okay, where am I getting this bedwetting from? New York Times headline, Trump and allies forge plans to increase presidential power in 2025. Quote, Mr. Trump and his associates have a broader goal to alter the balance of power by increasing the president's authority over every part of the federal government that now operates by either law or tradition with any measure of independence from political interference by the White House, according to a review of his campaign policy proposals and interviews with people close to him. The agenda being pursued has deep roots in the decades-long effort by conservative legal thinkers to undercut what has become known as the administrative state, agencies that enact regulations aimed at keeping the air and water clean and food, drugs, and consumer products safe. But that cuts into business profits. Its legal underpinning is a maximalist version of the so-called unitary executive theory. The legal theory rejects the idea that the government is composed of three separate branches with overlapping powers to check and balance each other. Instead, the theory's adherents argue that Article 2 of the Constitution gives the president complete control of the executive branch so Congress cannot empower agency heads to make decisions or restrict the president's ability to fire them. Reagan administration lawyers developed the theory as they sought to advance a deregulatory agenda. <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. So... Uh, the president would have this unlimited authority to enact rules, but not with certain departments, but Congress could overstep the president and empower these agencies on their own. N none of that makes any sense at all. That's not how the Constitution works on any level. The New York Times should know this. So their worry is that the past presidents that assumed power for themselves and it was right because it had the approval of whoever the elites on the left were at the time. It's, it's almost as if they're saying the power is only afforded to presidents that are Democrats who have their approval. Well, that's exactly what they're saying. The power of the presidency doesn't change with the party in control. But one more quote, Congress created these specialized technocratic agencies, oh good lord, inside the executive branch and delegated to them some of its power to make rules for society. Oh, that's so cute. But it did so on the condition that it was not simply handing off that power to presidents to wield like kings, putting commissioners on top of them who presidents appoint but generally cannot fire before their terms end 
while using its control of their budgets to keep them partly accountable to lawmakers as well. Agency actions are also subject to court review. Okay, so according to that theory, the Constitution somehow grants Congress the authority to transfer its legislative powers to the executive branch, but not the president? No such line of text exists. But for the recess appointments, maybe. But let me remind you of some of the authoritarian monsters of the past. Have you ever heard of Howard Zinn? For generations of leftists, he is the guy that transformed our history with a book called The People's History and, of course, college lectures. From the ZinProject.com headline, Textbook Myths About President Woodrow Wilson. Quote, at home, Wilson's racial policies disgraced the office he held. His Republican predecessors had routinely appointed blacks to important offices, including those of Port Collector for New Orleans and the District of Columbia uh, and Register of the Treasury. Presidents sometimes appointed African Americans as postmasters, particularly in southern towns with large black populations. African Americans took part in the Republican Party's national conventions and enjoyed some access to the White House. Woodrow Wilson, for whom many African Americans voted in 1912, changed all that. A Southerner, Wilson had been president of Princeton, the only major northern university that flatly refused to admit black people. He was an outspoken white supremacist. His wife was even worse and told darky stories in cabinet meetings. His administration submitted an extensive legislative program intended to curtail the civil rights of African Americans, but Congress would not pass it. Unfazed, Wilson used his power as chief executive to segregate the federal government. He appointed Southern whites to offices traditionally reserved for blacks. Well, kids, that's the granddaddy of the progressive movement right there. He used executive authority to violate the 14th Amendment. Did you learn that in school? Think the New York Times would it ever remind you of that? No. That's what happens when you have the benevolent dictator. Ever hear of Executive Order 9066? That's when progressive Democrat president FDR just decided, eh, Americans of Japanese descent weren't protected by the Constitution anymore. When the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor, our West Coast became a potential combat zone. Living in that zone were more than 100,000 persons of Japanese ancestry, two-thirds of them American citizens, one-third aliens. We knew that some among them were potentially dangerous. But no one knew what would happen among this concentrated population if Japanese forces should try to invade our shores. Military authorities therefore determined that all of them, citizens and aliens alike, would have to move. This picture tells how the mass migration was accomplished. Neither the Army nor the War Relocation Authority relished the idea of taking men, women, and children from their homes, their shops, and their farms. So the military and civilian agencies alike determined to do the job as a democracy should, with real consideration for the people involved. Yeah, just like a democracy. Is that something Donald Trump would do? No! No Republican president would. Only a Democrat. But then again, if you remember, it was Barack Obama who said, eh, Constitution, Schmonstitution. I'm making my own immigration laws. Effective immediately. The Department of Homeland Security is taking steps to lift the shadow of deportation from these young people. Over the next few months, eligible individuals who do not present a risk to national security or public safety will be able to request temporary relief from deportation proceedings and apply for work authorization. Now, let's be clear, this is not amnesty, this is not immunity. This is not a path to citizenship. It's not a permanent fix. This is a temporary stopgap measure that lets us focus our resources wisely while giving a degree of relief and hope to talented, driven, patriotic young people. It is the, it is the right thing to do. No! Article 1, Section 8 says Congress makes those laws. Those people are still here. We've had auto bailouts, student loan forgiveness. We've got Democrat presidents ignoring the Constitution all day, every day. But you got to watch out for that Donald Trump. The left loves their dictators. And that's my argument.